Joker. The Joker? Yeah. I feel like the Joker. Joker had big... a 500? Well, you know, he had that like 14 foot long revolver. Hey guys, how are you? Oh, it's red. We're back. We're back. We're live. And we have all the wheel guns or circle guns. Well, we have on. two very large ones. Yes. It constitutes as all of them. If you When I look at this, much. I think of Charlie Daniels. I think of the Joker. Like, well, have you ever heard the song Trudy? Yeah. He's got a 44 hog leg up under his coat. Yeah. That's this. That's the 44 hog leg. True. That's, all, that's the 500. That's all of the revolver you'd ever need. Ooh, ooh, that, that's the 500. Bear 500 leg. Smith and Wesson. Bear leg. Yeah. So this will take out the bear that's hiding behind your neighbor's 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 refrigerator. refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. All of it. All of it. Well, these I are a couple. I mean, that's huge guns that we uh, acquired. You never know what's coming. The other in. day. It's just. Those are awesome. Yeah. Even you for wheel guns, very awesome. and everybody knows I'm not a big wheel gun guy, but them are cool circle guns. Well, they're shiny. They're shiny, and they made big boom. Yes. I like big booms. Yes. Big we booms need to get cool. some ammo in stock for this. Uh, Vinny found a round. I'm pretty sure that's all you need for this, is just you shoot one time and like all the dying. Well, but there are probably going to be multiple people wanting to shoot one round. Oh. So we need more than one round. True, true. But maybe we can share a round. Huh? I don't know. Coke, it's a Coke thing, isn't it? Hold hands while one of us shoots. Isn't it Coke that has like the share a round? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's his fault. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was Ron's fault. Okay, we can blame Ron. I'm down with that. Oh, I don't like my new glasses. What? I don't like them. Uh, why? I, I don't know. They're just readers. I gotta take them. Well, if the, uh, what are we reading? Huh? What are we reading? Uh, I'm I, not reading anything. I'm just following oh. your lead. Deal. Deal. Uh, I thought it was going to be Ron and I, but I was I walking in. He was like, run away. And he's like, no, Jeff said he was doing it. You said huh? you wanted the cool people to do it. I think the cool people should do it, so yeah. That's why I but up. Ron was like, anyway. Okay. Welcome. Where's Everybody. our mediator? I have no idea. She's feeling like poo. Huh? Why? I don't know. Well, she was yakking up a storm before. She sounded like she felt normal. And she now has a frog in her throat. She says something, and I don't know. Hmm. Is she having trouble talking now? I, I really know. need to see that. I. I mean, it's Sam. So even though she's struggling talking, she's still going to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, Yes, I do know. What it's you mean. just gonna. It's Sam. She is a very bubbly person that has to let everybody know she's in the building. That she's here. Yeah. So, and that's why we like her, because she lets everybody know she's here. Right. You don't have to worry. You never know. You, Where's you, Sam? You never oh, there not she is. know that she's I hear here. Here that way. <clears throat> when you talk to her on the phone in the building, you, it's it's in stereo. Oh, I've never tried that before. I might have to try that same today. Offices, <laughs> right? So I get it in stereo because I'm up against the wall, and so it just like ricochets. Okay, enough. Of that. Uh, but anyway, doing? we got all kinds of fun stuff going on. We have IDPA tomorrow. Huh? Um, two gun opens up Saturday for next week, so 9 a.m. All you shooters do do the practice score thing. Sign up. Get in. Uh, it sells out extremely quickly. So yeah, by 9:05 to 9:10. Although there will probably be a bunch of people that are kind of bummed out, On the and a couple of extra people that might be able to get in at 9 o'clock if you're not overshooting. Because right. we got Red October this weekend, so we got a bunch of us range guys that'll be overshooting in Sparta this weekend for the AK match, or the better than the AK for some of us. Mm -hmm. um, so then we've got the retaliation match on Sunday. So ARs on Sunday. Cantrell's going to be down in Arkansas shooting uh, at Mountain Valley Melee uh, for an IDPA match. Where in so, Arkansas is that? Uh, I think it's Hot Springs, he said. Ooh, that's a beautiful place. Yes, it's hot there. And they have springs. It's Arkansas. Been there one time. We actually, a buddy of mine got married. Um, at the one of them haunted hotels mm -hmm. so I had the choice of I was a usher in his wedding and I had the choice of either a purple zoot suit 
or a Ghostbusters costume because he's a big ghost hunter. So I chose the Ghostbusters yeah, costume absolutely. because when are you ever going to be able to be in a wedding and wear a Ghostbusters suit? They're you? like, really? I thought you'd pick the zoot suit. Are you kidding me? Did you cross the streams? We did not cross streams, but I did get to run around a haunted hotel with a Ghostbusters costume That's on. That's awesome. And it was, God, it, I think it was July, so it was unbelievably oh <laughs> hot and muggy down there. And everybody else at this play, at, at the at the wedding was in shirts and ties and yeah. tuxedos, all in yeah. black. They're just pouring of sweat. And there's me and Al, another buddy of mine, dressed up like two Ghostbusters in these paper thin cotton, <laughs> like, you were cool. Oh, you it was awesome. Every time a breeze would come through, I'd just giggle. Because that's all you had on, just... right? Was that jumpsuit? Yeah. Yep. But it was it was interesting. Nothing was out of the way, but it was all tucked away. It was good. And it was well, yeah, you got tucked away. Yes. But walking around the hotel and having all the little kids run up, like, Mom, look, there's a Ghostbuster. I told you we didn't have to worry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, not only made the serve. wedding amazing, <laughs> but it made the whole weekend awesome. Absolutely. So, big shout out to the wedding many years ago that we just won't talk about who it was because they track. were. But anyway, so good luck to all the range shooters this weekend, plus all the other people that'll be shooting this weekend. Um, we got CCW class on Saturday, mm -hmm. defensive handgun on Sunday. We still have there's spots on open. Those yep. Um, girls just want to have guns. Next one is next Wednesday. So still have plenty of time to sign up for that one. Uh, and then if you don't get uh, everything going, we've got basic handgun is next Saturday. So still got time to sign up for that one as well. So all kinds of fun stuff we Last also I have. Checked, we've got 18 spots left in girls and guns. Okay, so we still have plenty of spots. Yes. So that's good enough for a couple of girls to Wound up some groups some around. friends and and come in. So it's always a blast. Remember, it is learning stuff for the first hour, shooting stuff for the second hour, drinking and eating stuff, and winning stuff in the third hour. Yes. So tons and tons of fun. Forty bucks. You, all you got to bring is a 45. smile. Forty-five. Forty-five dollars. All you got to do is bring a smile. If you don't bring one, we've got extras. We'll send you home with one. Yeah, we will send you home with a smile. Absolutely. Yes. And possibly some good stuff. So yeah, swag, all the swag. Um, we have customer appreciation day coming up on yep. the 19th. So it's only about three weeks away. So we got all kinds of fun stuff planned for that. You have free rain, free lanes all day long. Um, we'll have giveaways. We've got, I think we've got an MCX we're bringing out. Uh, so shotgun, how do you get qualified for all the giveaways? Um, so we got food donations, um, non-perishable items. Everything's being donated to the Jefferson Barracks food Jefferson Barracks Military Food Pantry. It's a big long That's name. It's long. Yeah, big long name. But uh, so again, to recap, uh, we're going to have the, the kind of the woman in charge, uh, Linda, on. Uh, on ho hopefully, we'll get her in here next weekend yeah. to kind of explain what it is in her words. But uh, ultimately, for active duty military and uh, veterans, they do a food pantry. It's only open one day a month for each one. And they literally just open the doors. The people come through and they're able to pick up whatever they need um, to kind of round out to Don't make they need the, like toiletries and stuff too? Yeah, and they need all kinds of stuff. So it's just anything that you would use in your home within a month. If you got extras donated, like if cleaning, you supplies. Want some, cleaning supplies, personal hygiene stuff. Gotcha. Um, the toilet papers, the paper towels, the napkins, the tissues, how about, how about like diapers the soap, and stuff like the that. diapers. Okay. Um, I don't know about formula, but I'm sure nobody's going to turn away formula because that stuff's too. super expensive and it's got a really long shelf date on yes. it. So, yes. um, and I know that they're very big on wanting, making sure that all the stuff on their shelves um, that it's all well within. So, the date. Yeah. Just make sure that you're not like Those dates are just digging through. Anyway. I, but you can't like yeah. you can't sell it. Right. But they're not selling it. I right? don't know. Just don't bring in old don't, stuff. Yeah, don't think I, bring anything expired. Um, but yeah, bring in whatever you can. Um, help however you can. Uh, we'll have a bunch of different things. We're just lining out the remaining of the T's and I's that get to get crossed and dotted for the how and what and so forth. 
um, but drop off some food that'll give you a ticket towards either the group guns or we may pull out a second one for just the food drive. Um, I like to do something else with extra weight. So if you bring in more than 50 pounds or more than 100 pounds or something along that lines, you'll be kind of tossed into a different uh, one for a specific pistol okay. or something or you'll get a lot more of some sort. But um, like obviously every, you guys help every, every can time. Every of food or every pound of food you get a ticket? Uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, yeah. again. That's okay. that's it's the details. We gotta extremely vague. We gotta cross T's dot okay. I's. What I say, what Ron says, what you say. I'm just throwing out so, suggestions. I don't yeah, care. I like the idea of of the more you bring in, the more chances Absolutely. that you have. Or so if you go above and beyond, so you're gonna get a super benefit. So right. it'll be similar to what we've done in the past. Um, if you have food and you want to jump on it early, bring it in, and we will figure out what your extra bonuses yeah. are down the road. If you guys got ideas on how we can, you know, what benefit you should get for donating a whole heap ton, um, this is going for, for good people in the area, and these are the men and women that are or have signed their name on the dot, well, they've all signed their name on the dotted line, but are right. actively going out and doing the things that we asked them to do, not what they asked. So right. um, help them out. Uh, there's no cost associated for these people, so um, there's no real, this is a completely volunteer thing that they're kind of flying under the radar in some aspects of what they just are not really supposed to do, but they're doing anyway. How long anyways. has this organization, so awesome. organization been around? I want to say like 13 years, she was telling me. I thought it was um, And it was start, started by like six women uh, that uh, their spouses were overseas active and they were struggling to keep to, to make ends meet and uh, other parties were struggling and they were like, let's help where we can. Let's help each and other out. So yeah. next thing you know, it turned around and so they've been doing this a long time. Uh, I just found out about them recently um, and so I didn't know that this was such a cool deal, so it is literally in our backyard. So yes. we'll uh, we'll totally be helping out with that. Absolutely. So be appreciative if you guys could help out as well. Um, we also got another bonus that I'm trying to throw together for the USO um, through the Monster Match out at Benchrest, but we'll get into that once we cool. secure some fun excitement on that. Okay. What else we got? Uh, Real quick, Andy Miller Andy. commented about Block Days last weekend. Yes. It was awesome. Thanks, Andy. And Hopefully, everybody came out. Everybody that wanted to came out, and shot some free Glocks. And yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. And he's asking Jeff how camping was. How what? How your camping trip was? Oh, it was great. We yeah we went, we went we kayak. had Glock Sorry. days. You we had. went kayaked and uh, kayaked for nine miles, and it was a little short. Um, but uh, we had the best bonfire we've had as a troop in a very long time. Um, so yeah, it was Old Cove Canoe and Kayak Place out in um, St. Clair, off the Merrimack. So they, they provided the firewood and everything. I didn't have to bring any of that stuff. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty, pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of campgrounds that I know that no. supply. I guess they'd probably try to cut down on the ash borer. Yeah, they're, they're, they don't want you bringing wood in from a different county. <clears throat> That's been going on for years, that you don't want to bring different firewood to different counties. We don't leave firewood. You can bring firewood. Yeah, you're supposed to. Most campgrounds don't want you to bring firewood outside of that county. That sounds like a monopoly to me. It's a it's a Missouri thing. <laughs> or a well, as you drive to those campsites, there's a, all kinds of little roadside firewood here. Buy it here. It's over here. And there's well, like yeah, of signs. course they all want you to yeah. buy it from them. But yeah. what if I have a tree? That's that on fell the way down. to the campground. It's not at the campground. Like, yeah, but what if I what if what if I had a tree fall in my yard like Phil? Mm -hmm. Trees falling in yards, you cut it up. What are you gonna do? Camp in your yard. Oh, well, I mean, I've done it actually. I, my, my, when I was first trying out my hammock, I went in the backyard. And my kids pretend. My daughter pretended to camp in the backyard by taking a big number two in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's like, Frankie, what hole? are you doing? She's like, I'm just pretending I'm camping, mom. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, <laughs> my kids. You need to tell your daughter. 
<laughs> oh, Reagan gets all kinds of upset when I tell about that. No kidding. And then <laughs> Natalie normally starts laughing. I'm like, hey, you know, you're not too much better. You peed in the middle of the backyard and just said, it's like I'm at the park, Dad. It's a tree. You said I could pee on a tree. Kids, you gotta watch what you say. I know, you can't <laughs> teach them. I Especially can't. when they're little, they just, they're gonna take what yeah. you said and they're gonna turn it to whatever they need it's it very to mean yes. at some point. That means uh, that they can just whip it out wherever they are and just go. I've got girls. It's a, I know. It's, there's a process that they go through and it's like. It is funny. It, it yeah. And then you start to rethink what, what everything else you taught them. Yeah, yeah, that 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 oh, it, it yeah. does. So kind of disturbing. But anyway, <laughs> we got a lot of these poop stories here lately. Poop, poop, poop talk. <laughs> Speaking right. of which, let's move on. San Francisco <laughs> getting worse by the moment. Uh, let's get to something more exciting. The Cardinals. Yeah, we're we're gonna play in October now. Yeah, we're playing in October again. First time in four years. I'd like years. to say as usual, but it, we've been we've been kind of a little lax lately. We've I think they were boat. just wanting the extra time off, and then right. So ninety-one and seventy-one this year. So that's that's sweet. Um, I think they got a good chance. They're, I mean, it's the Cardinals. So well, we haven't been dominating all season long, no. but that's not the Cardinals. Everybody's uh, got a good chance now. Yeah, it's just started. So so they're. They'll, they'll, they'll go home. The pitching's um, been coming on strong, and so mm -hmm. is the hitting. They've been scoring lots of runs. Yep, everybody's kind of getting into the real real swing right now, and really kind of fired it up. And yep. Cardinals, you know, they wait till the last minute to do it all, and yep. they did. So that's awesome. Um, good job on the on the Blues. So everybody got their Stanley Cup ri championship oh. rings, and Layla got hers as well. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. I don't know These if you guys, guys caught that, just but really have embraced her. That's yeah, awesome. I mean it's it's hard not to when you have that much just pure love and enjoyment. Um, I mean it rings true to her. It's just it it's pretty awesome. Right. So I really I really appreciate that uh, they reached out like that and they they went above and beyond. Yes, yeah. those rings are very difficult to come by. Like, um, what, Twenty grand a piece or something like that. I don't know. They're expensive. They're I know wild. that. Um, I, have a, I know that the player rings are different than non-player rings, sure they are. Um, and I believe she probably got one of the non-player rings. I would think. Um, actually, one of the old interns that we had many, many moons ago at uh, over at Anchor, um, Doug Couch, has been working for the Blues for the past number of years, so mm -hmm. I just seen that he had his, his ring, so cool. right on, man. Good deal, good deal. Yeah. Uh, what else is new? I, don't, I can't read. I don't know. Oh, so. you don't have your new glasses that you yeah, don't like. Uh, the Springfield Hello Kitty or Springfield Hello Kitty. Springfield. Oh wait, Hellcat, something like yeah. that. Yeah, the Hellcat. Um, that came in. We got a little quick, couple of shots today with it. Um, three inch barrel, eleven inches on the flush fit mag, thirteen on the extended mag, just under eighteen ounces, seventeen and a half ounces, something like what? that. Eleven rounds. Eleven rounds. Thirteen okay. rounds. Okay. Three inch barrel. Mm -hmm. Six inches by four inches by one inch. Um, Eleven so. inch barrel. Three rounds. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Got Smith and Wesson five hundred oh, yeah. revolver. It's a big boom. Man. Anyway, um, not quite like this one. It's a whole lot smaller. Uh, U dot sights. They're really nice. Really so nice. It's, so it's a total departure from what they've done in the past. The, the Completely. The like and a there's full no 180. Zone. There's no grip zone, so right. nobody knows how to hold it. Right. Um, you can kind of get your you, you, some bearings on it, but no grip zone, no back strap safety. Great they sights right out the right out the box. Well, yeah, they went. They um, went instead of with the fiber optics. They they went with the night sights. With the night sight. Yeah. Yeah. Like a. This is what you want on an EDC gun. Um, it's about time some of these manufacturers start paying attention to yeah. that. That, yeah, just incorporate it in. Don't give me the cheap ones. I know that it helps keep the cost down, but put some tritium in there and, yeah. and give me something to look at it, at when it gets dark. When it gets dark, right? They also have an optic cut version mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, so we got Dustin has been out of town doing some other things. He came, he came back to to today, yeah. so he didn't work on Wednesdays. He still came in this morning, nice and bright and early. And, Dedicated. Um, so we got some videos that you'll see here in a little bit, but I think Phil threw together a quick video of uh, some of us taking our first shots on it. So let's check out that video, and you can see how the thing actually shoots. We'll talk more about it here in a minute. What do you got? So we're gonna go shoot the uh, Bummery Hellcats. Oh, yeah, it's so, good. <laughs> um, shoots really good. The, I think one of the things about it is it sucked me in, and you take the first couple of shots, and you're like, ooh, 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 and you just keep going faster. Uh, the sights come up really, really well, and it actually tracks really, really well. Yeah. Uh, it's got this new, instead of the grip zone, so you know where to hold it, it's got this adaptive texture. I like that about it. Because it's got a place for your index, so you know wh where it is and yeah, what's, that, what's going on. I like the placement. In the dark. Yeah, I, I like really the like grip. Um, I'd imagine that for actual regular concealed carry type things, uh, that grip texture is pretty soft. So mm -hmm. rubbing up against the skin, it, it doesn't seem like it would bother no. you at all. Um, near, not nearly as as rough as like uh, the 365 right. or the Shield. The Shield is. The 2.0 is pretty, pretty rough. Yeah, well, all, all um, the all the Smith and Wesson 2.0s are pretty rough. Yeah. Now, I personally like that super rough texture. I like the fact that it doesn't move, it doesn't wiggle, and I feel like it, I have a firm grip mm -hmm. on it. Whereas this this Hellcat is a little less. Um, you know, we, we kind of watching everybody shoot. You can kind of see everybody kind of. You get that milking of the grip that keeps happening where it just feels like it's coming out. And that's with the non-pinky extended version, right. just a flush fit mag. The 13 round mag in it, a um, lot better. Uh, it seems to stay in. But overall, I'm, I'm really kind of, I, I, I want to shoot it? that one side by side with the 365. Yeah, but absolutely. I think the 365 is in for for some I serious gonna, market yeah, share some, loss because yep. I really, I agree. I don't think that we'll be selling a whole lot of 43s uh, or 42s mm, for a while. Not. Even the shield, I think, is going to seriously suffer. Um, yeah, because I'm a huge fan of the shield capacity. When you can double your ammo capacity right. and not lose anything as far as size, actually, you're gaining uh, the ability for more concealability because it's smaller than the shield. It, it feels like it's smaller. I don't know. I mean, the shield's not, the, like the grip itself is definitely not as wide. Right. Uh, slide overall sizes, and we, I, you know, we didn't even think about it. We did put it next to the XDS, mm -hmm. the Springfield XDS. It's like a micro amount shorter on the slide. Um, about the same thing as far as depth and everything, the but XDS is thicker. Like way, it's weird. Way more. It's, the XDS is a single stack, but it's thicker. Yeah, the slide is a little it, thicker. No, it, the frame. The frame is. The thicker. frame was thicker. Okay, well, we'll uh, we'll be having a, a shoot Dustin's guns coming up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to call it. Is shoot Dustin's guns. He's got a bunch, couple, of, a bunch of different guns from Springfield that came in recently. So we're gonna we're gonna totally take them. Oh, what you got there? I got. Speaking of what? new guns and stuff, we what? got. Um, Andy Miller wants to know what your thoughts are on Colt no longer selling ARs to the public. 
You know, I a long time I don't know what it is because Colt hasn't listened to the consumers in a long time. They keep coming out with stuff that nobody's really wanting, nobody's really buying. They came back out with their same um, revolvers and, and their same old 1911s and so forth. I don't know of a single person that's bought a Colt rifle in I don't know how long. Uh, there, what is it, the 69? Hundred or whatever, sixty nine, thirty two, whatever the Colt LE AR is. That was about the only decent one that they had, in my opinion. It was just plain jank. There was nothing, nothing no frills to it, it whatsoever. So I know that we haven't carried them in the year that I've worked here. I, I don't know of any other ranges around here that carry them on the wall. They, um, they came out with the, the the revolver like last year. Yeah, and we sold. Probably, I don't know, four or five of them. To people that are Colt fans and right. are Colt Revolver guys yes. that bought it because it's a new Colt Revolver. Mm -hmm. And that's right. it. It's a King Cobra it. or something and like nobody, that? Nobody, I don't know. I think it's, they, a, it's a Cobra. Yeah. And how many people are still talking about it? I don't know. Nobody. I have no idea. Um, so, uh, I don't know if they were getting pressure from the government because they do have some government contracts still. Uh, I don't know if that's where they were getting a bunch of heat from them saying, hey, you need to just cut down on civilian sales. Or if this was just their chance of saying, you know what, we're going to try and gain brownie points with the government or the, some of those in government um, by saying, hey, we are going to stop selling to the civilian market because the civilian market wasn't they're, really they're buying. <laughs> and so it was just their way of being like, we're going to go politically correct. Right in our losses of all right. the monies. Well, they um, filed for bankruptcy protection multiple times. I don't know. I mean, I I know Samuel Colt in his original days was somebody well, that over, definitely right. start, turned, uh, turned a lot of people into no longer being victim, but right. uh, being equal. So yeah. I don't think he's too happy about it, but. I don't think Colt was really doing a whole lot of civilian business. Not that I saw. I mean, yeah, not that we saw here. We get the occasional guy coming in asking for a Colt revolver, and that's about the only time I ever mm -hmm. hear Colt being brought up. Or um, there, we get the, the the 1911 fans come in as well. Yeah, and they're, I mean, and they're still building the 1911s. Yep. They're still building the revolvers. So there's the the two things that they really are doing. I mean. And, if you're into revolvers or you're into 1911s, like Colt does have a really good platform for yep. those. Yep. Um, I don't know if it, their revolvers beat out the Smith & Wessons or the Rugers, but I'm not much of a wheel guy, so I'm not really just, sure. I, paid that close attention that. I just know they, they are nice. Right. Um, their 1911s are nice, uh, yeah. but there's a lot of companies that are doing those things too. So. Yes. I don't they have a know. lot of competition. Yeah, they have a lot of competition. What are you playing with here, though? Um, so Tula came out with a lead core projectile steel case. Yeah. So um, our issue, and, and uh, every other range's issue with steel cases, usually it is a bimetal round. Do I need to hold this steel? You gonna zoom in on that? This is a lead round, so it's not going to damage the backstop, but it's still steel cased. And if you have an AK, you know it is a very violent action. Um, we've tried to run brass cased ammo through our AK, and it just it did not tears work. up the casing. And then it has to go out for repair because there's a hollow casing stuck. Although in. we did find a new way. You just load this in there, and then when you when you slide it, it jams it right in there. And then when you when you eject it, then you have so a new extractor. Yes, a new extractor method of. Don't do that. Uh, I wouldn't really disclaimer. Su I wouldn't do do, I wouldn't don't, suggest don't, don't that. Don't do what we do. But that was a quick fix. We did figure out that there was actually brass in there. So yeah. So we have this in stock. Um, in stock, it's cheap too. You can shoot this here at our range. Um, we, what? This would be great for what? It's coming up this weekend. Yes. Red October. Red October. Yes. Yes. So we've still got 
some ammo. Now the other thing is it's difficult to actually get in. Um, so yes, just all you AK are, guys, uh, like take advantage of our bulk deals because you can come in, you can grab a bunch of it while we've got it, and then like we've got I think we only a have little bit left, case. maybe a case, right. case and a half, something yeah. like that, um, and then we. We're not going to be able to ha get any more for a couple of weeks. Um, so we do have another order pending, but it's only shipping every once in a while. We're so, waiting for um, the distributors to get it at their facilities. Yes. So we need more. Just like the Hellcat. Yes. Yes. And the 365 SASS. Jacob said that he's got one yes. that he should be picking up soon. And we'll be able to put uh, our hands And on. he's teased me and saying that he's going to bring it by. Let us check it out. I am really looking forward to that. I've looked through that MeproLite site on top of an MMP and on top of a Glock, um, and it was a little odd. I, it, overall, I like the idea, similar-ish to a red dot, but sitting up on top of the slide, I, I don't know. It was like I wanted to look at the front sight, try and figure out where my front sight was, but there isn't one. you're not supposed to look at that. Because it's not there. Right. And they had taken off the front sight on both of these pistols and just had that on the back, and it's like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like, I kind of look at it as a more streamlined optic. Yeah. Is what it, And that's kind of what looking. they're trying to pitch it as, yes. is a, a non electronic red dot. Correct. Um, which is what I'm excited about SIG going, hey, let's just cut the slide and then mount this down inside it. Right. I like the idea. It's a real low um, profile. Yeah, because uh, my one problem was I couldn't find the front sight. So having the top of the slide that you can look down as a reference point as you're bringing that gun up, I think is going to be a good deal. I see one drawback. The ports. No, oh. ports. Yeah, it's a ported. It's yeah. ported, which I'm thinking. So that thing's so. Screwed. How are you going to do one-handed manipulations? Exactly. That's yeah. the only drawback. I see. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those are some of the things that I'd like to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play with, and I want to. I want to check it out because that slide is, is is tough. I mean, mm -hmm. that that recoil spring. Obviously, in the baby guns, the recoil springs have to be a little bit stiffer um, because there's not any mass there to absorb much of the recoil so I, I don't know I, I don't know usually with SIG with SIG they they do something to create buzz and um, they'll sell this pistol I think so too yeah. and uh, what I'm hoping is like Jacob had brought up uh, Jacob being the cigarette our, our cigarette um, what he had brought up was Hopefully they made it to where you can unbolt that and then put an optic on that in its place. Yes. Because I think that would be even more cool because then you'd have the ability of having a, the, that optic mounted a little bit lower and yet mm -hmm. the rest of the gun is totally smooth. And you could do um, one-handed manipulations. And you could do one-handed manipulations yeah. there and you can do all of your racking and yes. stuff. What? So Amy Miller has another question. You want to know if 223 Wild is worth it? Yes. Yeah. So 223 Wild is kind of a newer, and it, internet buzz, you obviously. Um, it's a newer variant of the 223 556 five, and the Wildcat kind of whatever. So, in a nutshell, the 556. Five, is built for higher chamber pressures. The 223 is built for more of a precision end. They're virtually the same or very similar. Um, what the 556 allows to happen is the lands and grooves start a little bit further down into the barrel, which allows the projectile to come out of the cartridge, get into the barrel, then impact the lands and grooves and start its spin. Um, with the added pressure of the slightly thicker cartridge in case and the higher pressures that are, result from that, it makes it a little more stable for that bullet to make that jump in two steps. Whereas the 223 with its slightly lower pressures, the lands and grooves are a lot closer to the end of the throat, so that bullet goes straight into the lands and grooves and spins. 223 historically has always been more accurate. 556 five, just allows for the higher pressures. 223 Wild is kind of that middle ground where 
It's not quite as deep as the 556, therefore it's not a true 556 chamber, and it's not as tight as the 223. So it's kind of that middle ground. Um, I know that Ballistic Advantage has been doing it for a while, um, and according to Clint, it's the greatest thing, so that's the majority of where I'm getting my hurrah for it. I've got a couple of his barrels chambered in 223 Wild. Um, I've got incredible accuracy mm -hmm. out of my 14.5 and my 17.7 through him. Um, all my personal guns and man, my 18-inch I mean, barrel. Yeah, I don't know of a single wild. person that has a ballistic advantage barrel that doesn't rant and rave about how great that thing is. So, if Clint says, I say. Hope that answers your question. He's pretty reliable. Andy. Andy, what other questions you got, buddy? He's like, Is he the only one? Watching? I don't know, but it's cool. He's asking good questions. He is I asking like good it. Question. So Eddie Knox just asked, <clears throat> "What do you think about hunting with an AR-15? Been thinking about deer hunting with it, but don't know too many people that do. Assuming he's talking about two, two, three, five, five, six. Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, I have. I have taken a doe with one. Um, Want to be shot selected. placement yeah. is is absolutely paramount if you're shooting with two two three five five six. St some states won't allow it. Um, I'll be honest. I think it's a pretty crappy round for hunting. I'll just be hundred percent honest. It, it is a pretty crappy round. Um, I do have some of that Nexus uh, frangible ammo. It's a seventy nine grain or something like that. It's oh, wow. a it's a ridiculously heavy round. Um, when it impacts, it's frangible, so it hits and it just turns to vapor and dumps every bit of that shock load right away. Wow. Um, that being said, she ran for a ways, and I ended up putting three three rounds into her, um, and this was about Great Dane size. So um, I hung up the AR at that point. There's Personally, I options. wasn't too terribly excited about it. I do know plenty of people that have hunted with them and still continue to hunt with them. Now, the AR platform itself, absolutely a phenomenal platform for hunting. And in fact, this would be perfect. Yes. Um, the 30 caliber round, I've got, Alternative season. Yes. I, I've got my mutant uh, that I took out there. I have shot a number of deer and I have not seen them drop as fast as they did with my mutant. <laughs> Maybe they were just scared of the mutant. It is amazing and it could cause death automatically. I get it. But um, the 7.6 tube at 39 options, 300 blackout yep. is another great caliber. Um, the AR-10, 308. You got 308 in the AR-10, yep. 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creedmoor, mm -hmm. uh, 458 SOCOM. I mean, there is a ton of options on the AR platform. And one of the best options of the platform is going to a pistol. So with the pistol brace, you get the ability of, it is a lot lighter overall. Um, it is shorter, yes. Wandering through the woods, not as big a deal for having a short platform, but it is nice to, to have a short nice. platform. It is. Um, but one of the best parts about it is by having a pistol, it is a firearm, so it does qualify for firearm season, and basically anything qualifies for firearm season as long as you have a firearm license, but it also covers you for the alternative weapon season. So an alternative weapon season, it's a secondary, and it was originally developed for things like atlatls, black powder, mm -hmm. uh, more traditional yeah, crossbows. pistols, crossbows, and so forth. Um, crossbows now has passed in, in most states, uh, including Missouri, where you don't have to have any kind of a doctor permit or anything. You can use that for bow season. Mm -hmm. So they opened up crossbows for the entire bow season and pistols for our awesome but pistols on the AR platform even better um, because you get all of the benefits of having a rifle but it's also a pistol so mm -hmm. you get all the benefits of it being a pistol so um, long story short I think it's a great platform especially in calibers other than the most traditional 223556 right. five, uh, but shot placement over anything uh, good projectile it can be done um, just 
shot placement. Make sure it's a good shot. Yeah, you need to be really shot. confident um, in your shot placement. Your, in your a equipment. shoulder shot is not going to do anything. No. Uh, it's got to be heart and lung or Spine. head. Um, I do know of a, of a lot of guys that like the head shots on does. I'm not really partial to them, but I do know a lot of people that do it. And with a 223, I really don't think it's a horrible idea because of the fact that you're either going to hit it and get it or you're going to miss it and she's going to be all right. Yeah. So, um, more power to you, man. Go for it. Anything that gets you out into the woods, though, yep. that's the number one Absolutely. thing. Get out in the woods, experience nature. There's nothing like that, that sun coming up on a cold, cold, blustery morning mm -hmm. and hearing them leaves rustle. And yeah, hearing the woods wake up. You're like, yes, here she comes. <laughs> and then it's a squirrel. <laughs> and then you hear the leaves rustle again and you're like, ah, oh, it's a squirrel. Yeah, it's again. A squirrel and you're like, oh my God, that's not a squirrel. And don't say, oh my God, because that normally scares them away. Yeah, they use you, huh? I heard a story. <laughs> You've heard stories. Well, I see. I get yeah. it. I'm not going to admit that I've done that. You just did. Oops. <laughs> it was funny, though. Okay, let's just move on. All right, let's do. Um, some chaos. O'Fallon got some car thefts on the rise. They're uh, everywhere. Yeah, so uh, this guy, it just happened to him recently. He says it was a normal routine. I got up early. I'm an early riser around 4 a.m. Now, this kind of tells you, like, this is a little odd, but at 4 a.m., he went out to his garage, uh, opened his garage door, and went and got a water bottle from his SUV that was in the driveway. Went back inside for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and when he came back outside, his car in the driveway was gone, and the car in the garage was gone. They literally came in and stole both of his vehicles, a GMC Acadia and a RAV4. Uh, police did find them in a little while later, uh, but when he called the police and was talking to the police, found out that his neighbor's car was stolen as well. So there's like three cars in one, one street that were swiped, um, all it looks like at like four o'clock in the morning. So there's been five cars stolen in the last five days or four days. I, I have a question. Found. How many of those cars had keys in them? That's the thing. So later on in the article, he was going on and talking about how now he locks his car uh, as soon as he leaves. No, he doesn't. I really he hope he locks his new car. <laughs> he's locking the rental car. Right. Yes. Yeah, he's locking the rental he car. He's not locking his car. So I, I, I guys, mean, like, people, lock your stuff. Yeah. Come it's, on. It's not that hard. Don't to make it easy. Hit the for button him. when you go outside to get something out of the car, and then hit the button when. Right. Like, or just go boop on the inside of the car and then shut the door. Lock what does it unlock the door? Huh? Doesn't unlock. I'm just saying, he right. went out to get to his car. Oh, so gotcha. hit the button, unlock right. the doors, get your stuff, lock go in, door. hit the button. Right. Or hit the button, like you said. Right. And pay attention. Yes. Pay attention. You're, Security you're, cameras. Just because you live in a certain area doesn't mean you're immune from the criminal element. No. No. Not at all. So. Um, fun stuff over in Hong Kong. They're what still happened? fighting. Um, they have completely thrown out the whole extradition stuff, but the protests still continue over in Hong Kong. If you haven't paid attention to it, I would highly suggest at least doing some research into it. So to wrap it in real short, Hong Kong was owned by your uh, England until, is it about had a lease or something 10 like years ago or 15 years ago, something like that, um, for 100 years, and then it, it relapsed and they gave basically gave Hong Kong back to itself so or gave it back to China and wow. so China was like okay but the people in Hong Kong were basically living under British rule for that time frame so they had things like rights um, yeah. <laughs> they had internet access um, and, and a lot of other things that's why you always see made in Hong Kong is totally separate than made in China mm -hmm. um, we now see more of it getting tagged as made in China and less being tagged made in Hong Kong but I digress. Um, but Hong Kong has been under a fury lately because China, after so long, was like, you know what? We're kind of tired of having two sets of rules, one for mainland China and one for Hong Kong. So we're just going to make Hong Kong like China. And the people of Hong Kong are like, whoa, wait a minute. No, 
we have been living free for the past hundred and something years. Um, virtually, we've had rights, we've had freedoms. You can't just come in and take them all. And so they've been clashing for like the last 17 weeks. Um, huge clashes. So the most recently, they actually had a cop that shot one of the protesters and an unarmed protester. So we all know how that goes. This is an 18 year old kid. Um, in Hong Kong, you can't have you can't have guns as a as a regular citizen. So if you're law enforcement or military. Correct. So as a regular citizen, you can't have a gun. So these people that are protesting don't have guns. Um, they are waving around the American flag and trying to get American rights. So just shows you that us Americans should probably be the Americans that well, Hong Trump Kong thinks we are. Trump was going to buy Iceland. Can he buy Hong Kong? Yeah, that'd be a pretty good idea, actually. Why not? Right. But uh, so this guy, I'm not even going to say his name because uh, I would horribly butcher it. Um, and he's a student at a memorial college of another name that I'm not going to say because I'm going to completely butcher it. Um, but he was shot in the chest by an officer during the middle of one of its uh, their deals. He's in the hospital. He's gone through a couple of surgeries. He is still conscious. Oh, he's alive. He I is alive. So they think he's going to be, he's going to, he's going to get better. Uh, I believe he may have been shot in the shoulder. Uh, it's Chinese information, so you're not going to get all of it, and they're not really releasing any information on it, but from hearsay, it is a, a shoulder injury, possibly. Um, so they were going on to say that the officers were outnumbered. Uh, one officer was being beaten by at least 10 protesters after he fell to the ground. This other officer came to his aid um, and he raised his weapon. The protester supposedly had a metal rod uh, and so he shot him. The cops shot the, uh, the officer. Here's the thing that really kind of messes me up. The, or the, the, yeah, the cop shot the protester. Right. Um, the police are admitting, this is Hong Kong police, so you're, again, you're not gonna get all the information, but they're admitting that 14,000 rounds of tear gas were deployed. Oh 900 rubber bullets, 190 bean bags, and I have no idea what this is, but 230 sponge grenades were launched at protesters. I don't know what a sponge grenade is, but I am really intrigued and I want one. Or like multiples, like 230 maybe. I, I guess that's maybe the right it's amount. A, a, a sponge like impregnated with bleach. When it hits you, it burns. I don't know. I think shooting bleach sponges at people would probably be a bad idea. Yeah, Very bad. 40, 40 millimeter grenade with 40? a sponge on the end. So it's a 40, 40 millimeter, millimeter sponge slug. ended grenade yeah. chunk. Can we have those in America? I need one of those. So as it comes out, does it, it the, the sponge expand? I wonder if it's add, like one of them like stress, water. like one of them stress balls. Yeah. Like a stress ball sponge come flying at you. That would be awesome. <laughs> I need at least ten. Is this out of a shop? Phil is showing a foot. It is. That looks like them marker ones. Yeah. Like they, they yeah. Y'all do the testing and stuff with. Oh my God, these are blue tip. Yeah, I, I know you guys can't see it. I wish you could. If Phil had a way of just dragging we'll, we'll the drop We'll post a picture thing. of it up on the We'll website. post a picture of this thing. These, like, it's a blue tip on a 40 millimeter grenade. Wow. I need some of them. <laughs> those are non-lethal. I'm sure we can probably Less maybe lethal, possibly yeah. get it. Yeah, you'd think. Yeah. But do we have to go to Hong Kong for that? I don't know if Trump buys it though, we're in. It's true. We just bring Hong Kong here. What happened to that purchase agreement? What if we take... Or Iceland? What if we take... Uh, they said no. They said we're not for sale? <laughs> yeah. They said, uh, dude, we're our own country. We're not for sale. But I bet Hong Kong might. We could trade them. We'll take Hong Kong, and they can have Chicago. They're not going to want that. They're not, that's not a even trade for them. What about... We do, like, sections of California? Sections of California. Yeah. Well, because I they don't want to give up a bit, like, everybody laughs at California, and I get it, I understand, believe me, I'm, I, I read. Well, California um, but if you were to California. section out, like, the San Francisco, Oakland area, yeah. which, and, like... Which most Californians do. South L.A. area. Yeah. Like, the mainstay portion in between, 
for the most part, yes, pretty normal people. Yes, um, like they like they believe in things like rights. They believe in like yes. civil liberties, um, and there's just subsections. What do you the, mean carve the, out sections hey, of New York? Like, I figure out how to do this. Oop. Ooh, <laughs> Phil's got some. He's gonna. He's gonna do the thing and show you the cool guy sponge grenades. These are neat. I want one. SpongeBob grenades. <gasps> what if we did yellow ones and we put yes. eyeballs on it? He's gonna do the thing and show sponge you the cool ball. guy sponge, sponge grenades. These are neat. I want one. SpongeBob grenades. <gasps> what if we did? Can they still hear us? Put eyeballs on it. He's gonna do the thing and show you the cool guy sponge grenades. These are neat. I want one. I don't know. Maybe you could hear us during no, that time frame. Now. Maybe they couldn't. I don't know. The thing's red, so maybe you hear us now. But yeah, we're back. Don't those look like fun? Like yellow eyeballs, yeah. the sponge robber. Maybe we can talk to X products. <laughs> maybe we need to. Dewey, if where you are you at, that, buddy? You gotta have a pink Dewey, one. Dewey, if you're it. watching this, which I highly doubt you are, but if you are watching this, we want one. We want some. I'm no, sure the one. can can. We want can. more than one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the can cannon, I'm sure would launch them suckers out. It's a bit bigger, but I know that he had like the other little flare launchers and stuff. Mm -hmm. That 37 millimeter flare launcher. Right. I know they won't do a 40 millimeter flare launcher because then you can put destructive devices in and that's very expensive. Yes. Like 200 bucks, a bunch of phone calls, a bunch of paperwork, just to go boom, boom. One time. But I wonder if this thing would come, it's not a destructive device, maybe. Right. Can we come out with a 37 millimeter one? That way it's a little bit different and call mm -hmm. it the SpongeBob grenade? You'd have to have a pink one and call it the Patrick grenade then too. Maybe that's the, the pineapple grenades? Yes. Maybe you do a pineapple grenade as the Patrick grenade. Okay. I don't know. But maybe we need to. SpongeBob lived in the pineapple. Yeah. And Patrick lived under a rock. Yeah. Or lives under a rock. Yes. I wish he'd stay there. He was an obnoxious character. Oh my god. I mean, in reality, both of them are super annoying. Yes. They were awesome when I was, like, younger, because they weren't there when I was growing up. But <laughs> when I was younger, they were awesome. And then the kids found them, him to be very awesome, and they are very annoying. Very. 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 It was worse than Cat Dog. Cat Dog was awesome. Cat Dog was not awesome. Cat Dog was awesome. Okay, we're getting up. That. That's like Toe Jam and Earl. What? More awesome. Toe Jam and Earl? Earl? Yeah, Toe Jam and Earl. What? It's even older. It was a video game. Oh. It was a great not video a game. It was a great video game. This was back in, I want to say like, not Nintendo, but probably PlayStation 1 days. Yeah, I didn't do that stuff. The Comment below if, you're, if you remember group. Toe Jam and Earl, one of the greatest games. They had, they had one of those like infinity worlds where you would go on this world and you'd be running around and then if you went too far you would literally fall off and fall down on the, line, the, the world below you. <laughs> so you'd have to, it was, it was a lot of fun. You had a lot of spare time. Uh, when I was little I didn't have a whole lot to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like working and stuff, it was just school and sports and when it was too dark and, to play. It was game. Yeah. yeah. It was mainly a wintertime game because it was too cold to go out. Gotcha. And it got dark really early and it was hard to see the puck after it got really dark. Yeah. And so we go in and play Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah. Okay. It's a fun, fun game. Hey, Baffle Strikes. Um, and the FBI crime statistics are out. I don't exactly know why I'm excited no. all the way, but at the same time, it is pretty nifty. So overall, the homicide numbers dropped from set 2017 to 2018 from 15,195 to 14,123. So over a hundred less, uh, or no, I'm sorry, over a hundred, over a thousand less homicides last year. Go America. So you wait, telling me wait. it took them 10 months to figure this out? Yup. Wow. Pretty sad. That's efficiency. Yeah. I mean, it's the government. They do everything really fast. Yeah. No. Okay. Really slow. Um, but it went down. Overall number of people murdered with guns dropped as well. So in total, 10,265 were committed with firearms. 
Handguns accounted for 6,603. So two thirds of all homicide or, or of all homicides were hand handguns, not fire, not rifles. Um, rifles were only used in 297 homicides. Shotguns in 235, and quote other guns in 167. 2,900 homicides were listed as firearms, but type not stated. So maybe there was some others in there um, as well. But when you look at the numbers, the rifles accounted for less than, or it was just under 2.1% of total homicides last year, and only 2.9% of gun homicides. Ooh, what? Jeff just got attacked by Phil. He saw you looking at I'm your looking phone. for something. You gotta do it. You are busy. Not good. <laughs> not good. Phil yells. <laughs> you must not see Sam get yelled at a lot. <laughs> Every You're time. Like I'm, a, like I'm eight years old in a fucking classroom. Right. I, Sam will have it out there. She'll be trying to watch the comments coming in. Short filled erasers. Throwing stuff. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Phil takes it cereal. You gotta. You gotta be on the line. When you're on the line. Okay. And it's red. Okay. <laughs> Back to it. So, more than five times as many murders were committed with knives than rifles, and more than twice as many with, were killed with, quote, personal weapons, which is considered hands, fists, feet, that sort of thing. So, uh, twice as many people killed people with personal weapons. Like, if I choke you. Oh. Or I beat you to you death. Face. I kick you in the face yeah. until okay. you die. Um, okay. Personal gotcha. weapons um, accounted for twice as many people as what if these are registered. Rifles. See, it would be a it would be a personal weapon. Okay. I mean, if you had your knife, like if you were uh, Mattis, like who? General Mattis. Oh, yeah. He is he. General Mattis doesn't have his concealed carry license, he's so that's why you'll it. never see him with his hands in his pockets. He's need it. Not to fact, not not to mention the fact that he's a Marine and Marines don't put their hands in their pockets, but especially not they don't Mattis. Put anything he in their pockets because those are deadly. They don't put keys in their pockets. They don't, don't. They're, well, Phil does put chapstick in his pocket. That's yeah, there's a few things that they're allowed to have in pockets. Yeah. I don't remember what they are, but it's very, very few. Very and I'm specific. pretty sure they're allowed to have, like, air. And <laughs> maybe a little bit of air. Air? Yeah. Although their pants are kind of tight sometimes, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so interesting mm -hmm. in the world today so the FBI is supporting the fact that we don't really need a ban on guns guns are way fun especially when you have mutants Short, shorty mutants so uh, this would be a great hunting rifle uh, we also have pistol. some other good hunting pistol hunting firearm hunting firearm yes. hunting firearm uh, of the pistol variety uh, the mutant in the longer variation makes a great ah, rifle whoa how is it gonna be able to return these if you break them <laughs> I was trying to give you a reason to return them, <laughs> other than I don't like them. Okay. Um, we got a couple of other cool guns on the wall for hunting. We've got a uh, 30-30. We've oh, got yeah. a uh, model 700, is, is uh, chambered in seven millimeter. Yes. We've got plenty of shotguns. We've got uh, some other stuff. We've got what else? We got we well, got we a got rise. The rise. Yeah. Uh, Smith and Wesson 500. Smith and Wesson 500. Great for the alternative season as well. Um, we get the Rise um, six, five, six five Creedmoor, yeah. uh, what which is the AR platform. That's what we're yes. talking about. AR platform yeah. as well. Um, we have range friendly ammo. That'd be great to shoot in your AK mm -hmm. or your Banshee uh, mutant. I'm sorry, I just like them. Things. Chris has a love affair with this guy. Yes, very much so. Um, but. Yes. Uh, what else we got? We got all kinds of fun stuff coming up. Get trained. Yes. Come in. Today's Wednesday. Ladies, swing in. Free lane for you. Uh, what we got next week is girls who just want to have guns on Wednesday. Get signed up for that. If you have anybody that's kind of maybe thinking about, yes, sign her up and sign her friends up. Mm -hmm. They will have fun. Yep. Um, just send them with a smile. And if, like I said before, they don't have one to get here, they'll have one when they leave. Yep. Absolutely. So. What else you got? Our staff has just as much fun as the participants. 
probably more fun. Probably. Probably more fun because we're all a bunch of gun geeks, and when you see that just light up smile yes. the first time they shoot one that they weren't expecting to like, and then they shoot it and they're like, "That was cool." Wow, that one was awesome. <laughs> what is that? And you're like, "It's a X Y Z thing," and they're like. I have no idea what you just said. And it's like, no, because you're just a full of buzz and excitement right now. Just take your phone, take a picture of it, mm -hmm. and then when you go home, say, I need one of these. And I promise he won't be mad. No. Because um, no. <laughs> that's, that's normally, we get the couple that come in afterwards and they're like, I was told that she needs the, this thing. The MPX. <laughs> uh, and you're like, okay, we can do that. Um, so, Things to pay attention to coming up. We've got the Customer Appreciation Day. That'll be October 19th. Um, I really wanted to do a dunk tank. Yeah. But that, maybe next year. I think we should. We'll shoot Because I think it would be awesome. I think yeah. it would be way fun. And I would totally volunteer for it. Oh, I would figure too. Out yeah. how to, I got a wetsuit. How to... Oh, no. I would not need wetsuits. Why would you want a wetsuit? Because I don't want to be cold. Oh, my... You sissy. Yeah. It's October in Missouri. Well, it could be nice. Right now, it's 90 degrees outside. It is now. We might Tomorrow be all right. Supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we might be 70. Last week, though, too. Yeah. They, they keep saying that the fall, fall cold is coming. Yeah, the leaves aren't going to change until, like, December at this rate. Yeah, we had a long one last year. Yeah. I don't know. I found a persimmon tree in my backyard, cut open the seed. A it's what? shook a persimmon. What is it? A per, it, it's a persimmon. It's a fruit about yay big. Oh, uh, I'll bring you in some tomorrow. I, Fantabulous. I it's so, it was very good. Oh, yeah, you ate one. It just sounds like something you'd, like a problem you'd solve in geometry or something. A persimmon? Yeah. Okay. It might be a paradigm. I never heard a of different. a persimmon. Oh, Are man. they native to the United States? I would imagine so. Like, I don't know. I found out about him in high school when we were in the natural science class and he was like, we're going to go out into the woods. And by woods, it was like one little strip of like trees, trees. in between <laughs> the baseball field on this side, the strip of trees here, and then the football. So there was like, there wasn't much. And we're like, there's not woods out there. Yeah. And so we wandered out there out and there's like, 45 trees in this little patch and we wandered through and he's like this is a persimmon and we were like a what and then he's like all the ones that are squishy go ahead and pull one off of there then try it out and we were like yeah we'll watch you do it first <laughs> <laughs> no thanks buddy we don't know what you're talking about and it, it was amazing it's kind of a apricot mm -hmm. type of a, really small not like, quite a peach not that size but, yeah, um, yeah, got some like four or five big monster, like super big pumpkin seeds yeah. inside of them. Uh, don't eat those, they're, they're, they're not good. Um, everything else is good to eat on them and there's all kinds of like persimmon jam. But you gotta, you gotta eat it to get the seeds out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just... That's what I did. I just popped it in my mouth and just pulled the seeds out. That's exactly it. You yeah. just take a bite and then you just... But Angel was looking at me like, what? don't do that! Yeah, well. And I was like, what? You told me to <laughs> Angel gets scared sometimes with us. I mean, I don't think she's used to, to us people. <laughs> us people is some weird well, we individuals. Do take a bit to get used to. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we have the funds, we do the weirds. Um, you know, you no never quirky. know. You could wander in and you could have Sven standing there or. Or Thurgay. Or Thurgay or a guy in a kilt. Right. With a big beard right. or. Or Ron. Or Ron. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we have red hair and green hair and. Yes. A not Phil, a you not have, Chris. We have no hair. <laughs> we have no hairs. Um, we're an eclectic group. Yes. But I think it's good because then when you walk through the door, it doesn't matter what you look like walking in through the front door. There's somebody weirder working here than yeah. you. It's like going to the county fair sometimes. Yeah. In like a good way. Like Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're we're odd in a good way. Yeah, we don't we just don't know how to operate the ride. Yeah. <laughs> we're like a bunch of carnies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of carnies. Here, throw these in like bottles. like Barnum and Bailey, though. We need, oh, maybe we can get like elephants to wander around. 
Although I don't think elephants would like it here. You know, elephants, like, they feel everything through their toes. So they probably wouldn't like that whole booming underneath. Barnum and Bailey. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Barnum and Bailey, elephants, like. You know the weirdest things. I'm just saying. You, like, worthless trivia, I would want you on my team every time. See, but I know the worthless trivia that's not even in trivia things. Because I go to trivia things and I'm like, I got no clue. And they're like, oh, this one's easy. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what year was the telephone invented? I don't know. I that's just know trivia. that Alexander Graham Bell did it. That's not trivia. That's, those are, that's, like that's trivia. No, that's, that's history. T anyway, phones are a big thing. They are. Sometimes you get pens thrown at you while you look at them. I got a new pen. <laughs> there you go. Freebie. So come in, hang out with us weird people. Um, we will make you feel at home. <laughs> we will make you feel less weird. <laughs> right. Right. But in a good way. Right. So come in, uh, get some training. The trainers are a little less weird than, than, than some of the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. odd sometimes, but I mean. Well, so to be a trainer, you need to be in a certain mindset, I think. And they've got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're either Marine, the Army, we got some, well, we got Diva. We got Diva. Like, totally. And, and we got Schulte. Yeah. You want to talk about different mindset? Yeah. That's him. We, we got some different people. Yeah. But they're smart. But it's good. And that's what's we all, good about us. We all get along so well, though. Yes. That we do. We, uh, it makes it easier to get to work and come into yeah, work, and yeah. it's harder to leave, easier to come in. Right. Makes it uh, makes it a good place to work. So. Yep. Yeah. Come can. in, get your mutant, get your range friendly 7.62 ammo. Um, pick up was fi this 500 Smith and Wesson. Um, mm. We got all kinds of goodies. So let us know what you need, what you want. This comes with two comps. Just so you know. Do you need like one after the other? Is that to calm it down? Does it come with like a chain? I just I think it's to make the the fireball bigger. Mm. Bigger fireballs are cool. Right. Does that thing go full mm. auto? Uh, uh, or is it fully is it just a fully semi revolver? It's a fully semi. Does it take extendo clips? No. Mm. No. So this must not be an assault revolver. It is not. It's a pepper. It's a pepper revolver. It shoots out some humongous slugs. Yes. And then just little brother. Yeah. <laughs> little brother. 44 Magnum. 44 Magnum. How a 44 Magnum becomes a little brother is a little odd, but hey, yeah. I guess when you're sitting next to a 500, you're all right. All righty, guys. So I think that's it. Have fun. Have a good weekend. Come in and shoot. Um, are you working this weekend? I'll be here Sunday. So I'll come hang Sunday. out with with Jeff or Thurgay. Never know who's gonna show up, but one of them two will be here. be here. There you go. Can have all the fun. That's right. We should probably do a live show. <laughs> Tomorrow. Oh, that'd be good. Anyway. There you go, Phil. You if you wanna hang out with Phil, you're gonna have to sign up for the classes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He'll love it. He'll have a great time. You'll have a great time. Yeah. Um, and you'll learn some stuff. Yes. Learn stuff. All the things. All the things. So come in, do some shooting, have some fun. We'll see you guys next week. Are you ready? Yep. Are you ready?